time today. Okay, uh, we'd like to thank Francis Souther for the delicious meal. Everybody give a round of applause. Thank you, Francis. And now I'd like to bring Brian Belcher to introduce our speaker. Thanks, Shannon. Our speaker today is Jody Ashby. She's with the Ohio County Economic Development Office. She's going to let us know about some of the neat things they have going on for businesses and entrepreneurship in this area. So without further ado, please help me to welcome Ms. Jody Ashby. Technical difficulties, maybe. I'm not used to working with this system that we have going on here. So. Okay, so um, I don't know what Chase normally does whenever he gets up in front of you all, and he's not here, so I'm pretending to be Chase today. But I just wanted to remind you of what economic development is, what we do on a normal basis, so that everybody's familiar with that, because I know some people don't really know what we do all the time. So just to give you an overview of that, um, we assist startups. We help with business expansions, uh, staffing and recruitment assistance. Purdue. Um, business tax incentives, we can help you uh, know what's going on in the tax world and how to get some of those incentives um, that are offered from the federal government, the state government, things like that. Uh, low interest business loans, industrial development, workforce development, commercial property and location <coughs> services. So if you have commercial property available, please keep us in the loop on that. Or if you know anybody that does, because we do list that whenever people are looking for a place to do business, we're the ones that they usually contact and we're you know out there pointing out what's available so um, community mark community marketing that means no matter what you do we're out there marketing for you so we're doing a community overview video many of you guys have gotten emails or phone calls from our marketing team that are doing a video currently uh, just to showcase what's made in Ohio County what we have what our resources are because uh, that is all important to incoming industry and people who are looking at us to uh, expand into Kentucky into Ohio County and create jobs for our citizens. Um, and grant applications, so we fill out a lot of grants hoping to get extra money. Uh, sometimes it's for business, sometimes it's for tourism, sometimes it's for workforce development, just whatever. So um, if you're looking for money for anything, always let us know because we may know something that you don't. So what's happening right now, everybody knows about the OZ Tyler Rick houses, right? That's the big topic. So the OZ Tyler Rick houses, if you didn't see, they had one collapse the other day in Owensboro not good for them maybe good for us we'll see um, but the plan is for nine eventually which will increase the uh, tax revenue for the county um, within four years by a million dollars so that's huge for us and that's overall that doesn't mean it goes to one place some of it goes to the board of education some to the fiscal court um, but it's a big it's a big chunk of money for us so kudos to us on that um, expansions right now I know there's been a, a few uh, discussions with some of our industries about expanding uh, currently in the near future but the one that stands out to me because um, we've been working pretty hard on that is WPT expansion um, he was supposed to come here today I have been inviting him back to chamber and to get <coughs> Travis Robbins is who I'm talking about trying to get him reacquainted with the chamber um, but they they have gone from non employees ten years ago to now almost a hundred employees most of that is current expansion um, with plans for future expansion now what that means for us economically is that the product products that we make in the future and the, the industries that we recruit in the future you know that's a that's a resource for them um, for example and I'll go into this in a minute aerospace parts or or automobile parts you may not know that those um, that there's a lot of products that are made for automobiles and for airplanes that require non-woven materials but there are so so that's good for us in, in what our overall strategic plan is small businesses they're popping up everywhere we've got the bake new bakeries we've got the coffee shops I mean there there's a lot of them I didn't list them here and I, I don't I don't mean to highlight any and leave anybody else out but um, you know who you are congratulations to you if you've started a business lately and even better if you were able to get a small business loan through OCEDA um, because it really helps out um, the entrepreneurs and the new business that's coming in take advantage of uh, what we have to offer through OCEDA if you are in that category or if you want to do something like that because we can help you a lot um, new restaurants Beaverdam thank you 
um, for the fast food restaurants that I hear are coming in over there. Um, requests for information. So we, the prior to this year, um, Ohio County Economic Development received four total requests for information from industry. And what that means is industries, usually foreign, looking to expand in the United States or into Kentucky, um, asking us for information about what we have to offer as far as property, workforce, things like that. Four prior to January, this year we've gotten 12. So that's huge for us and what that tells us is that we should see growth. We should see some fast growth. And there, there's a lot of people in this room that's probably thinking, well, where are we gonna get the workforce, right? I know that's on some people's minds. But the truth is the workforce is there. We're not connecting with them very well. That's the problem. And so we have to figure out how to connect with that workforce. And we know they're there because we've got 5,000 people leaving the county every day to go to work. Um, and we have people coming into the county to work also, but we have more people leaving the county to work than we have coming in, which tells us that the workforce is available. Not to mention there's a whole lot more people participating in the workforce. So the more that happens, the more workforce that's going to be available. But we do need some things in order to make that work in this county. And so that's part of the things that we're working on. And I'll go over those in a minute. So the trail town, uh, everybody has anxiously awaited the kayak access ramp ramps coming in. We should start construction officially on those in mid-July. So I'm um, hoping to see those four access ramps coming in. I hope that um, as we get those in and people start taking advantage of those um, that a lot of landowners kind of warm up to the idea of participating in that because um, bringing tourism and livability to the area, one, it increases the quality of life for our residents and two, it brings people in from the outside for other things. So we need to give them other things to do. We've got the music down pat, right? I mean, we've done that well. Thank you, Joe Bess and Jody. Um, but we have to have other things for families to do and these kayak access ramps are hopefully going to be one of those other things for them to do. And the more that we increase tourism, the more that people are attracted to our area and sometimes that's the only thing that matters to business owners in the first place. They're going to look for where they want to move their families to, not necessarily the resources, they'll make that work later. Um, so the airport, if you all have seen the aerospace engineering for kids, the uh, Young Eagles event. You might be thinking, what, that ha what does that have to do with economic development? We'll talk about that in a minute. But there's a lot of great things going on at our airport. Um, Next Generation Leadership Ohio County through the Chamber. We're working on that with OCEDA and the Chamber in collaboration and many, many other folks. Um, what that is, is going to be, it's a leadership class for our high schoolers. So just like the adult chamber leaderships uh, that you may have heard of, this is going to be specifically for our juniors and seniors at the high school. Um, hopefully to make them want to stay and, and use their talents in Ohio County in the future to give them some county pride and some leadership skills as well. So we're hoping to kick that off in August. Um, so why is the interstates that are coming in significant? There's been a lot of question about that. So we know that the I-165 I is there and we're moving towards, and I may or may not say this right because it's changed a couple of times, but I think it's I-365, is that right, that's coming in? Or 565, which is it? Do you know, JC? 69. 369, 569. One of, some, uh, some combination of those numbers is coming in. So that will be the Western Kentucky. We know the Natura is already there. So um, what the significance of that is if I go and talk to um, a company in Argentina, and I'm going to use that because I met with them recently, um, they don't know what parkway means. If they don't talk to you directly or me directly, they're not going to know that a parkway is a four-lane highway. The only thing they're looking for on a map to move industry into Kentucky is I want to be along the interstate. So changing that designation to interstate puts us on the map before they ever get to talk to us because we may not get to talk to them before they make a decision or before they eliminate us. So it's really, really important they know that we're along an interstate, that our industrial park is along an interstate highway and now going to be along two <coughs> interstate highways. So that's huge for us when it comes to economic development. So some industrial opportunities. Again, we're back to the aerospace. I'm going to highlight this in a minute and explain why. The aerospace parts manufacturing, automobile or automotive parts manufacturing, which we already know, right? Uh, the non-woven products manufacturing, food production, agricultural products, distribution, and complementary goods to those things. So what on earth does aerospace have to do with Ohio County, right? We don't have a huge airport or anything. We've got this tiny little airport that we're really proud of, but it's not going to do much in the way of like 
international travel, right? But the thing is, we're surrounded by the raw materials. We already know that we're making the auto uh, automotive parts here, um, and the same materials are used to make the aerospace parts. With that being said, we're in two, within two thirds uh, of the United States, all of the United States in the driving distance, and our high school is implementing the aerospace program that will produce a qualified workforce. So what industrial leaders are now looking for, it used to be that they would, they would look for the location, all the materials first, and then they would worry about the workforce later. Now you have to build the workforce first. That's the first thing they ask. What are you doing about a workforce? Um, and then we'll worry about all the other factors. So the fact that our high school is, is implementing this program, we do have uh, our, an airport that's actively seeking to get younger kids interested in aviation and aerospace engineering, those sorts of things, and we have the materials, makes us kind of the perfect location to be a parts manufacturer. And by the way, Kentucky is number two in the nation for aerospace parts export. So that, that could be a huge advantage for us. So that's kind of um, what I'm looking for is that type of industry that complements the products that we already have um, and, and what we have to offer here as far as a workforce, especially future workforce. Um, so we already talked about the 5,000 people leaving Ohio County, so I won't say that again. The Select USA Investment Summit, those of you who saw my Facebook or were on my Facebook know that I was really excited about that trip and what it had to offer because like I said, um, in the four years prior to this year, we had four total requests for information from industry. Um, at that summit alone, we had four manufacturers request information for Ohio County. Um, we're talking about agricultural machinery, manufacturing, um, and things like that other metal manufacturing, um, agricultural businesses such as chemicals, things like that, that asked us um, for information about Ohio County and two follow-up meetings, six <coughs> connections with major site selectors that are bringing these big industries into Kentucky. So we're doing okay as far as that goes. Now we just need to see movement, right? We need to see that industrial park fill up. We need to see people move into Ohio County. We need to see good paying jobs come to us and, and a, a workforce that's qualified to work, right? So some of the uh, some of the things that we need to make that happen is uh, we really need to explore the opportunities to combat the opi opioid crisis. Whenever I went to Chicago recently, uh, we had a panel of six site selectors that sat in front of us and that was question number one. What is Ohio County, Kentucky doing about the opioid crisis? Now, it's not as bad here as, you know, in the cities and things like that, but still, we have to address that question. So we have to have an answer for that question. And whenever you have jobs open and you have uh, applicants coming in and you hear that four out of five of those applicants are having some sort of uh, addiction issue, we, ha we have to do something about that in order to produce a qualified workforce. So um, Justin Cowan and I have been, have been getting together on a community corrections committee trying to organize that. It's a slow, uh, slow thing in progress, but it'll help us deal with that. It'll help us deal with recidivism, hopefully, um, and, and some other things when it comes to, to getting our workforce back into the game um, so that companies that want to expand can expand. Companies that want to come here will have a workforce and we're not competing for workforces, but rather sharing a, a an ample workforce so that's the goal um, so we want to retain talent uh, with opportunity if we want to keep these kids here who are studying engineering now because that's the big thing we're gonna have to have opportunities for them to stay here <laughs> opportunities that are you know they're making a living wage and things like that so in order to do that we have to have housing we have to have the tourism we have to have um, we have to embrace the new technologies um, we have to work, focus on the workforce development, the product diversity. Everybody knows about the TechX and GoFame programs, I'm assuming, or you may not, but if you don't, we have plenty of opportunities for our kids to, to learn about advanced manufacturing and those sorts of things, which is kind of, it's going to be kind of our game, right, with our, um, with our dynamics, manufacturing is where it's at, manufacturing and agriculture anyway. Um, so we already talked about taking advantage of the buildings and properties, but we do have to um, expand our product. Um, it can't just be the industrial park because not every company wants to go to the industrial park. Um, so we have to know what land and um, buildings and property is available for certain companies and, and what the, um, I guess the price tag looks like, not just in terms of money, but 
free sources and, and um, utilities and all of those things. Um, solid public and private collaboration. So many times whenever we're talking to companies, we hear who, who writes your paycheck. <laughs> if you are affiliated with the government, we don't wanna, we don't wanna even talk to you. Well, I mean, my, I get my paycheck from physical court, but I, have, I, I don't talk to David every time I get a call from somebody about doing business or expanding business or share that information. So I would like for everybody to understand that economic development, you know, we're here to help. We're not here to interfere. So it's a different thing. So um, that's my hope is that people will start to understand that. Most of you do, but I'd like to spread that message anyway. So I got a special invitation while I was in DC. I had to highlight this um, for to come to the Argentinian embassy. And I thought, they're crazy. They think that they're talking to somebody from the Cabinet for Economic Development of Kentucky, right? Why are they inviting me? But um, as I sat down with them, I realized that they knew exactly what they were doing. And they sent us two requests for information, um, and they have uh, some major companies that want to expand and are looking at Ohio County specifically. Um, and those sorts of opportunities and that sort of face time is what gets us there. So as you guys are out talking to people, you may not know that uh, you're the face of Ohio County whenever you're having a certain conversations, but just keep in mind that one, you can always call on economic development if somebody's looking at business expansion, but two, uh, you may be the reason why they want to come here. Something that you're doing may be the reason why they want to look at Ohio County. So always keep that in mind. And that's all. Any questions? Thank you, Joey. Okay, now uh, I'm going to ask any members have any announcements they'd like to announce. Joe or uh, Paul, anything? Would you like to say anything? I didn't recognize you as being the mayor here. Oh, that's fine. I'm here <laughs> okay. No way. Okay, um, we will not have a July and August meeting. We'll take a short break. The board will be meeting though. So if you all have any ideas or anything that you would like to see happen at our meetings or in, in town anywhere, just call Judy at the office or get a hold of one of us board members. We'll be glad to look at that. Now I'm gonna draw for the spotlight, the business in the spotlight, Trevor Lewis Beefo Brady's. So that'll be the September. And get your tickets out. And I'm going to read the number 887057. All right. Citizens Bank, thank you for the gift. Now we're going to recognize um, our second quarter Chamber Excellence Award. And just a little bit about this award. Um, you have to actively promote and assist the Chamber with this recruitment of new members. Uh, you have to attend Chamber activities, participate in Chamber committees, and support the organization and planning of Chamber events. Pursue new opportunities for the Chamber by demonstrating leadership and commitment to the well-being of the Chamber. The Chamber Excellence um, Award will be um, an automatic nominee for the annual award, which is the um, where it's voted on by the board of directors. And so, with that being said, the second quarter goes to Citizens Bank. So, if you'd like to come forward, let us take a picture. Now we're going to recognize outgoing officers and directors. I would like for Brian Belcher, Kyle Martin, and Jamie Evans to come forward, please. We appreciate your years of service and all your hard work, and we will greatly miss you all. Now on to the 2019 and 2020 officers and, and directors. I would like for you all to come forward, please. All the new ones. Everyone. And I would ask for Paul Sanford to come forward and uh, do the installation. And I would like for you all to 
Tell everyone your name and who you're affiliated with, please. We're gonna get a picture of you. Yeah, go ahead. Josh Coffin, Poison Technology. Been on the board for like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> going off in 2020. <laughs> Brian Wilson uh, slipped back outdoors uh, an hour and has been on the board. <laughs> I'm Judy Law. I'm the Chamber Office Administrator. I'm the only non voting member on the Chamber Board. My name is Travis Johnson. I'm with Jackson Dow Attorneys at Law. It's going to be my second term on the board. Uh, it's nice to get to know everybody. Thanks. My name is Teresa Ball, and I'm with Tanner Management McDonald's, and this is my second year going on third year, I believe. I'm Sarah Stone. I'm with Citizens Bank. This is my second year. I'm Brittany Bowers. I'm with Purdue Farms, and I'm <coughs> new to the board. Donna Anna Crawford with the Shirk Partners Insurance, and this will be going into my second term. <coughs> I'm Joe Beth Embry with Beaver Dam Tourism, and this will be my first term. Tiffany Webster with Persimmons, it's my second year. Jeanette Weedman, Kennergy, first year. And I'm Shannon Coots, and I'm with First United Bank, and I believe this will be my fourth year. Is that right? Yeah. And I got held back. I'm president again. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm not used to somebody saying they were admitted, they were held by. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> well, I know from having been uh, president of the chamber two different times, mm -hmm. a whole lot to it, and we do appreciate all the time and effort you all are willing to put into it. So we'll get this started. The office to which you have been elected is one of dignity and importance. In accepting this office, you undertake a responsibility which is not to be assumed lightly nor carelessly discharged. You are charged with the duties of seriously and was furthering the objectives of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce. With the policy and bylaws as your guide, you must be ever ready to exercise the function of the office with which you are entrusted. Further, you are charged with governing this organization according to the laws of democracy, under which laws every person who wishes to speak shall be heard. Toward the end, that in every matter considered, the best opinion shall prevail through the express will of the majority and the best course of action followed. Do you accept this charge? Yes. 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 Okay, if you'll raise your hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will seriously execute the office to which I have been elected of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce and will to the best of my ability serve as a living example of this organization, its philosophy, its philosophy and beliefs embodied, and beliefs embodied in, the in the Chamber of Commerce Creed. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Chamber Officers and Board of Directors. I'm going to get a picture and everybody's dismissed and we'll see you at the September meeting. But we're, we need to get a picture.